I'm back. Back from Config 2024 in San Francisco. And man, what a conference, a huge event. So many great talks, so much inspiration, so many good connections and of course, a lot of new products, new features. So in this video, I want to talk about these new product releases. I won't be doing a review. You've seen that on other channels, but I will talk about my experiences with these new products. What's good, what's not so good and how this could help us designers in the future. And of course, I want to see if my predictions have been right. Let's go. So let's start with the biggest one first, Figma Slides. This one came in as a bit of a surprise, as a one more thing, um, which Dylan Field, the CEO of Figma, introduced in a quite funky way. Hold on, um, can someone pull up my speaker notes? Sorry. Hmm. We actually have one more thing to announce, Figma Slides. By now you have probably tried it yourself or at least you have seen a ton of videos about Figma slides. So I won't be talking through the features. I won't be talking about all the things that are great or that are the promises for the future, but actually my experience with it. I have had the chance to play around with slides a little bit and I must say it's quite nice to be honest. It is a great way of combining Figma, so the design capabilities with classic slide building capabilities that you are used to from other design tools, from other presentation tools like Keynote or PowerPoint. And hey, we have tables. So finally, there is a table feature outside of FigJam inside Figma. It's still a bit rudimentary, so you can't do a lot with it, but it's tables. There is like with almost every new product, a couple of downsides, a couple of ugly things that don't work as well just yet. So let's go through them, at least the ones that I spotted. The first thing is that keyboard shortcuts do not work as well. Maybe because I have a German keyboard layout, but uh, things like shift period, which I think has the same placement on a German keyboard as it has on a US keyboard, should work identically, which it doesn't. So switching between slide view and grid view is not as fluent as it should be. I always have to go and uh, do this manually in the graphical user interface. Also, auto layout doesn't work quite as expected. If you wanted to build a grid of flexible boxes and you are used to just going into all the child elements, set everything to fill, fill um, and create a flexible grid of boxes, elements, text boxes, whatever you want, like you would do it in Figma. It does not work quite as well in Figma slides. The child elements that you create in Figma slides do not have the fill uh, capabilities like you would have in Figma. So the behavior between auto layout in Figma slides and the auto layout in Figma is quite different. Not all of the auto layout features work as expected you would have to take it back to an actual Figma design file, create it there and then copy it back to Figma slides, which works, but it's highly inconvenient. But there are some things that are a little bit bigger, like you have a lot of awesome templates predefined, but at the moment there is no way of creating your own templates. So creating something like a branded template or a template that fills your specific needs, like creating a style guide or creating a technical documentation or anything like that is not possible at the moment. Also, you can't change your slide size. You have to go with 1920 by 1080. So the standard full HD. If you are presenting in a different format, four by three or even a wider format, that's currently not possible. Thus is using Figma slides for other use cases like, I don't know, creating Instagram carousels. This is just not possible at the moment. So you will have to stick with the preset presentation format for now. 
Let's see if this is going to change in the future. I hope that Figma will introduce this um, as something that you can customize in the future. But at the moment you are set to the fixed slide size. So who is this for then? Who is Figma Slides for? Well, if you are used to Figma and if you have been building presentations inside Figma in the past, like creating your own slide decks just with Figma design files, then this is a huge upgrade for you. You got presenter nodes, you got a proper grid view and you don't have to bother about creating prototypes for your presentations. Plus the whole thing feels much faster, much more fluent. You get a little bit of interactive features. So all of this is cool, all of this is great, especially if you are used to Figma. If on the other side you are used to building professional presentations with tools like PowerPoint or Keynote, um, then Figma Slides does feel a little bit like a downgrade for you. So I hope that Figma will fix some of the things that I just mentioned and yeah, makes this whole thing a much more usable experience for all of us. What it does, however, anyways, is it gives you a glimpse of UI3, the new Figma layout, the new Figma UI that they have been announcing and that is still in beta. If you haven't done so, then you can click on the little question mark uh, on the bottom right corner and join the waitlist for UI3 and Figma AI, which brings us to my predictions. So if you remember my video from like three weeks ago, I made a couple of statements, a couple of assumptions about what is going to be announced. What can we expect? Everything regarding AI. Figma curated libraries. Much more opportunity for creators to monetize their own products. So let's start with the most controversial one. Let's start with AI. So there was a wide range of opinions and everyone I have talked to was either on the um, this is going to be great, it's going to replace designers, we are all doomed and or the yeah it can take us to maybe 80% but we designers still have to put in our craft, our personality to make the designs human. For me personally, um, generative AI, as in generate whole websites, generate whole products, still feels a little bit like a toy um, and it's not super reliable. Figma has just announced that they have paused their AI feature because it was able to replicate Apple's weather app repeatedly, which means they have clearly taken the uh, training data from somewhere in this direction. Um, what this will mean for the future, what this will bring, I don't know, but there have also been some really great AI tools which do help us solve tedious tasks like renaming layers or removing backgrounds. Of course we had plugins for these kind of tasks before, but now it is built into the Figma core using AI, which I think is quite nice going forward and which can help us speed up our design process. The other thing that I think is quite cool, if implemented correctly, is the AI search feature, not only in your personal project or in your, your team projects, but also in community files. And this brings us to my second prediction, assuming that the community features, the paid community, will actually benefit from this year's config. Now a visual search feature where you can search with just a sketch or a screenshot will actually be big for community files. If you do your Figma SEO right, then you can get a lot of eyeballs on your community projects, on your templates, your asset packs, um, things that people actually need that you can sell to them. So if, for example, you had a device pack of different devices, say iPhones, iPads, computers, etc., and you wanted to sell this thing for just $9, link in the description, of course, um, and you appear in the Figma visual search for anyone who searches for an iPhone frame or for an iMac frame, this will be big. And this will be really, really cool helping people to sell stuff on Figma. 
My third point was about component-less systems and it got even crazier. We got a whole new design system from Figma aside from Material UI and the iOS design system. We got the Figma Simple Design System, the SDS, and it works kind of component-less. So if you pick any component from the Simple Design System and you pull it over into your design, it will be not a fixed component, not a Figma component in that sense, but just a frame and you can highly customize it and then create your own components. I think this will be big for the future for a more creative design process, for a more creative product design process, something that we are actually adopting here at Human Deluxe going forward. And if you want to learn about that and uh, see how we are using components or not components, um, and what my strategy is, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. In one of my next videos, I will be talking about that. Not only how I solve this with component systems, but also how you can speed up your design process and be more creative and be more flexible without using components. I have done a video about my Figma master file, which you can find somewhere up there. What do you think about the new simple design system and AI features, Figma slides maybe? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye.